Fe efo'r rhaglen. Dyma ddim heri ar arwain, dwi'n. Pawb yn bresennol heddiw. Ti Edgar, di cyrraedd? Do. Ie, iawn. Pas ddim 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 Mae'n arall? Dag oes? Cyfnodion, o oes yrwyn cael ei bod y cyfnodion yn gywir? Jonathan, sydd yw iawn? Jyst yn sydyn cydeirydd ar y cyfnodion, ar ei ni ddeud fysyn i'n dod ar ei spen morfa yn ôl at y pwyllgor yma, da ni'n gorau disgwyl am fwy o gwybodaeth yn ei wedi gofyn i'r ymgeisydd am gwybodaeth ar ffordiadwyedd yn yr ardal yna felly i'r ymgeisydd heb gyflwyno hynna felly bydd y cais yna am mynd at gweithio'r mis medi. Pen mor ddod i'w rhaid e? Sy'n ffordiadwy? Pan y pan diom hefyd chi heddiw. Ac i, iawn diach. Os yr wyr y cyrru fod y cyfnodion yn gywir? Wyn yn cynnig rydw i treulydd? Oes pawb cyd weld, dwi'n chi'n agos ysgwyl chi'n a? Yna ni, diolch yn awr. Adroddiad y paneliau am weld. Ie, fi sy'n cymryd hwn gyda'i rydd diolch yn awr iawn. Mae'r adroddiad yn un, mae'n egluro'r sefyllfa yn eitha syml dwi'n meddwl. Fel da ni'n daeth mae'r pandemig coronavirus yn amharu ar sydd da ni'n gallu wneud yn gwaith ar hyn o bryd. Felly, da ni'n meddwl os yfo'n beth doeth i barhau efo'r paneli ymweld fel da ni wedi bod i'n gwneud. Dwi'n meddwl sy'n beth doeth mynd â naw a aelod a... I don't think it would be a very wise thing. So if... It wouldn't be good to send officers and members to a private property. I would hope today, if possible, that we can avoid having any visiting panels. I've asked officers on the back of this to prepare a bit more information than we would normally have. The PowerPoint presentations will delve into slightly more detail than is usual. There'll be a bit more pictures and also a couple of them will have a video of the site too. So I hope that this will be adequate for the members to be able to come to a conclusion on today's applications. If you truly believe as a committee that you really need to see something to see it better, then what I'd suggest is that you'd have a panel of three, maybe. You can choose those three today and they'd go out to the site and report back to the next committee. But I hope to avoid that today, if at all possible. So that's the recommendation. All right, thank you. Now, do we want to discuss a visiting panel then? Good right. Well, first of all, do you agree with this recommendation? First of all, Alwyn. Ah, yes. Fine. So the procedure in the report, there's a recommendation. If the committee still needs clarification on a certain point, then we could establish a panel of three members, and those three members could go out to the site if needed. I'd, but like I said, I'd like to avoid that if possible. Alwyn. Alwyn. Alwyn's hands up and the line. I, I'll come in. I put my hand up first, I believe. I just want some clarification, really, regarding the choosing these three members. As a rule, on the visiting committee, the chair is present. So would it be the chair plus another two or three different people? I've got no strong feelings one way or the other, but I think we need to be clear. It's up to the committee. What would you like to do? 
What about two members from the area? So the north and the south, maybe? Jonathan? I don't hear Jonathan speaking. Sorry, I did press it. Sorry, I think it's impressed itself. But I think it would be sensible to have three appointed from the areas. So the north area, the southern area for applications from the south. Oh, I, I don't think the chair can actually go out. Now, uh, so I'm not sure what the position is with that. So do you want to name three then? Or do you want to wait to see if there will be a committee? Alan. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. These visiting panels happen so infrequent. I think we've had two meetings during the past year. And maybe this is an over-exaggeration. Not one of these meetings are held indoors. They are all outdoors. I'm sure it would be possible if we went down this road. I'm sure it would be possible for people to get to the sites, to keep relevant social distancing. We can wear masks. So I think there is an over-exaggeration here. But if the committee's Adam and that this is the way to move forward, then I would suggest that we state clearly in the recommendation that this is something temporary, because I'm concerned, and not just on this committee, but I think a lot of things will happen on the basis of this COVID that will have impacts further down the line. And I'm concerned that this can happen unless we state specifically in the recommendations that this is only for COVID, just for this particularly particular period. Okay, thank you, Alwyn. And I think there are volunteers on this panel as well, aren't there? And ever, when we have visiting panels, very few people turn up. That's how it's always been, so I'm not sure if it will make any difference. Anybody else? Can we move forward with this? A question from Owain, is it? So we've heard that you don't need the chair then. No, I agree, but Ivar's hand is up. I don't see Ivar's hand up. I don't even see Ivar. So, Owen, now I can see Ivar's hand up. Ah, here he is. Okay, here he is. Yes, I'm completely in agreement with what Alwyn said. And I would volunteer to be a member of the Northern panel anyway. Okay, Ivar, that's one name. Another two names. Will anyone put themselves forward? <laughs> or will anybody nominate someone else? Owain? Will I would nominate to be on the panel if you need someone? I'll volunteer for and myself as well. Oh, too late. Okay, when? So, yes, thank you, Chair. I'm happy to volunteer as well. Oh, do we need to appoint now or when these cases crop up? It makes sense, of course, to send someone who's fairly local, depending on, of course, where the application is. John. I'm willing to volunteer in the south as well. Everybody up to now seems to be from the north of the National Park. I'm happy to volunteer in the south as well. Now, 
the chair has the right to go on the north and the south panels, I believe. If I can just come in here. So the recommendation says that we can nominate three members of the committee to visit if you are of the opinion that you need a visiting panel and then you can decide on the three at that point and then you can decide who lives closest to the sites that needs to be visited so i believe it would make much more sense if you decide to accept the recommendation that you don't appoint three members now because they could be completely unsuitable for the sites. You could get them all from the north and the sites could be in the farthest most reaches of the park in the south. Jonathan, yes, I was going to say the exactly same thing. The first thing is that I'd try to avoid panels if we can, but if we do need a panel, then we can decide on the three members when we discuss that application in particular. Okay, I'll second that. Can you hear me? I take it from the recommendation that we are going down that road. Now, if Jonathan is happy to include in his recommendation that this is something temporarily whilst COVID is the situation. Yes, okay, we can revise that by the next committee and revisit it as the situation develops. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so John's proposed, will anybody second? Yes, Judith? Everybody in agreement, a show of hands, please. No. We'll move on to the site visit now. Sorry, can I come in once again? When you say everybody in agreement, in this case, okay, it's not much of a problem, but please show yes, tick or no cross. It's much easier for us as officers to see who's for and who's against. We can't see everybody in the screen, you see, so if you just put your hand up, we can't see. But we can see, if we look at the participants, we can see who's voted for and who's voted against. Thank you very much. Now, now we move on to the first site visit then, Nant Kumranisav. And Geraint takes this, yes. Well, first of all, Chair, please, can I come in? Can I say something first of all, please, Chair? We've received initial information on this application yesterday. The applicant has sent a report from the occupational therapist on behalf of his mother, which adds some information regarding the medical aspects. And as I understand, the report is divided the report has been shared with the members either last night or this morning, but I believe all the members have had a report. Sorry, we're discussing the report panel, are we, Jonathan? Yes, we are, we are, but the information that has come to hand on this application... But the application has the speaker here. Does the speaker want to say anything. Well, what I was going to propose, Chair, because of the reasons and because of this new information that we've had to hand from the applicants and from the occupational therapist, I think that the officers need to do a bit more questioning, really, and there are some things we need to consider further in light of that report. So what I was going to propose with the first application is to propose is to postpone it um, until the officers have looked into this further information because it does pose questions. If we do decide to postpone it, I'd 
propose that the report and the visiting panel, when we go out to see the place, happens in the next committee as well, because I don't see much point having the report of the visiting panel and then to postpone the item or rather to postpone the application. Okay, but then what happens to the application itself? Well, my recommendation, I'm afraid, is to postpone. I know this has been on the books for a while and we've had a committee and the visiting panel already, but in order to ensure that we look at every single piece of information on this application, and we received this report yesterday, I haven't discussed this with the case officer in any detail. My recommendation would be to postpone the decision on this application until the September committee. I'm not sure if that changes the recommendation too much. I'm not sure, but I'd have to have a discussion with the case of this uh, um, to see if the case officer has anything else to say. Okay, so the applicant knows exactly what's what. Well, it's very frustrating that we get information so late in the day, but the truth is that the information is there now. So as officers, we can't dismiss that information. We have to consider what's in front of us and further information has been presented and we must consider it. So to give this further information a fair opportunity, I'd say I want to postpone it. It's frustrating, it's frustrating for me, but that's the situation we're in. Okay, before we discuss this proposal, where does this leave Mr. Aaron Hughes then? Who wants to speak? So my advice, it's up to you as a committee, of course, how you want to go about this, but my recommendation would be to have the visiting panel's reports in the next committee, then if the speaker on behalf of the community council wants to speak in the next panel, that would be the time to do that, and then to assess the application fully, so everything to be transferred to the next committee and no further discussion on it today until we've questioned this new information that came to hand yesterday. And this will be in September, yes? Yes, that's correct. All right, so is there a proposition? You've heard the recommendation to postpone, to postpone this, to consider the late letter. John Peer, would you want to speak? I, right, I'm going to call people to speak. So Neil Gwynn, then who's, who's the number, 83 something, who's this? Someone has a number as their name, Edgar, Edgar, three, Eight three six nine five four. His name isn't down. Oh, yeah, he's changed his name. Okay. Neil. Welcome, Neil. Hi. Morning. Um, I would support um, moving this this item to a later date, where officers had another chance to look at the information. I do have um, a concern about the circulation of confidential medical information and it would be good to get some advice about how that is handled i mean i'm very sympathetic to what we've received absolutely but it is confidential to an individual and i don't know quite what the rules are about how that information should be handled and who should see it? Yes, Leo. You want to do it? Yeah, my uncle Rinachal is a lot of quilter. Timmy, that's kind of hell. Take it all. What are you doing? Take it all. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able Occupational health. Um, do well, but I'm not getting the translation. Sorry. Do you 
Oh, I'm very sorry, I was on mute. Um, you've had the application. So the, um, is, is the translation working now, yes? Yes, fine. Um, sorry, I was on mute. The reports from the occupational therapist should have been circulated this morning. Can you get the translation? Are you getting the translation? Yes. Wonderful. Fine. Okay. Ivar Glenn next. No, I hadn't quite finished the question. I'm very sorry. So if I can come back. So this is confidential with members of the committee. The further reports that's come to hand, this has been commissioned by the applicant himself. And there is a power of attorney that's relevant as well here relating to the son and the mother so in those circumstances i think it is relevant to the planning commission but we've decided to share it amongst the committee members with the confidential element intact of course all right thank you ivar can you hear me Yes. I have a question to Jonathan. How would, the, how would it be if they appealed that we haven't decided within the eight weeks? Missing the eight weeks is not an issue in this case. The, applica the applicant has been providing information following this eight week period. New information has come to hand and we have to consider that information as it comes in. So there's no problem at all that we run over the eight weeks. All right, Ivor, thank you. John. I second the proposition to leave this on the table. I'll second that. So, all right. Now, Edgar wants to say something. Yes, I want to ask Jonathan, does this change anything regarding building regs? Well, that's the question which I don't really know the answer to. It does raise a couple of questions regarding the needs of the mother, and I don't quite know the answer to those questions. So that's the answer, I'm afraid, Edgar, without considering this. And we'll need to raise a couple of more questions with the applicants. It may not change anything, but I don't know the answer to that question at the moment. All right, thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? No? We'll go to a vote now then. Everybody who's in favour of postponing the green button, if you're against red, please. Now, I can't see some people with red or green. Some people haven't voted. They're all green. That's been carried. There's enough there to carry. So the recommendation that's been passed then is to postpone. All right, we'll move on then to number two. Mr. Garnet, come Nance call. And we have a speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Can I just check? Can I just check your King Cochrane? Can I just check before we start? Is the public speaker here? Just yes. Just to interrupt, Aaron Hughes is still waiting to come into the meeting. What would you like me to do? Well, the decision's been made, really. So if he arrives, there's no need for him here. Where is he? In the waiting room. Yes, he's in the waiting room, yes. Is there any way for you to contact him to explain what the decision is without bringing him into the meeting itself? Uh, yes, I believe I can do that. Can you do that then, please? And then we can move on to item two in the meantime. Sure. Aled, my Here, I've got yes. quite a full room there. I can't share the screen though for some reason. I want to share a PowerPoint presentation with you. Uh, I've changed the setting. You should be able to do that now. I'm well to call in yet. Can yeah. everybody see the presentation on their screens? All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is an application to sites three shepherds associated access paths and installation of a biotreatment plant in Mysa Garnet in Comlantco. It's at the far end of the valley. So here's the road that leads up to the site. And they will be sited here. So we're on a slight elevation here looking down on the farmhouse and then I'm zooming around now to the site itself and you'll see the poles here. So this is where the three shepherds huts will be. Then I'm zooming out and I'm zooming back to the farm. So the sites will be where the poles are. Now you can see there is some parking space and the parking space has been there since over 25 years. It's an informal parking space really for people who come to climb the Rinogith. There's room for about four cars. And then this is where the visitors would park. If you look up from the camping park, car park to the site, and then looking down to the farm. And as you can see here, they considered other sites. This is one site that was considered, but it wasn't re it wasn't really relevant with farm regulations. We agree that the site subject to the current application is the most suitable one. So this is where the site would be and that's where the parking is. So the three shepherds huts, they'd be parking, then you've got a path running up to them. So that's a slightly more detailed plan and then this shows the car park and this is the type of shepherd's hut that they want to install. So you've got windows, wheels, the main considerations for this application is policy 29 and the policy's been assessed. 
with this policy in light. We believe that the scheme is part of a re-diversification scheme and there's no detrimental impact on the landscape and we believe it's that's DP2 and SPG 7 and 13 are material considerations. We contacted National Resources Wales four cuts originally and there was a recommendation to reduce it to three. NRW's landscape architect visited and they said that it would be possible to have the shepherd's huts lying within the current tree structure and so forth. Now the site is far away from the farmhouse. Initially they wanted it closer but because of flooding and it was too close to the farm it was deemed unsuitable. There will be no new vehicular access. They will be going from the car park up to the sites and there is parking capacity at the sites. And we assess this because quite a few visitors go to the valley to climb the Rhinogrid and we discussed this with the applicants and they've got there is other parking provision as well which is slightly down the road so parking does not seem to be a problem so this was assessed in line with the policy and there are no convenient building facilities in close proximity biodiversity this is a very important consideration extended phase one habitat survey was presented there was some ecologist concern on the effect on lesser horseshoe bats and also on the stream slightly higher up we then asked for an otter survey and the ecological officer was happy with the results of that of, of that survey so it does coincide with the policy it's also part of the dark skies designation there are no external lighting so we deem it to be relevant there's only indoor lights the farm building itself is a grade two listed building and the development does not affect the listed building because it's not too close and we came to the conclusion that there would be no detrimental impact this is obviously a re-diversification scheme it's supported by strategic policy h it has no effect on the special qualities of the national park and it also ties into the Welsh language and cultural policies so after considering this weighing everything up and considering that the locations are suitable we have come to the conclusion that this can be accepted you can see that there are conditions set there is a condition specifically to submit a plan regarding the boundaries of the sites we've had the details this week and this so number nine condition number nine is no longer relevant a fence will be put around the site of the shepherd huts 
and the fences should be painted or stained in a dark colour so that they blend into the landscape. So there is a link between the Mesa Garnet farm landscaping that's been stated as well in the relevant policies, mitigation, no external lighting and no hard standing or concrete base. All right, thank you. Thank you for that. So, Mr. Hugh Jones from NLW wants to speak. Welcome, Hugh. Up to three minutes. And he's speaking on behalf of the applicant. Is he here? Who has arrived? Who can you hear me? Yes. All right, who? Yes, thank you very much. Friends, good morning. And can I welcome this opportunity to give a word of support to this application? Eleni herself apologizes that she's unable to do this this morning. She's a teacher and she's in work. And Gwinda van der Leri appreciates the support they've had from the National Park in the preparatory work over the past 18 months. I've been part of this application since a while, and I'm actually proud of the enterprising spirit of this family. They are adamant of trying to create additional income streams the farm is successful, but they are looking forward. They see big changes on the horizons. They feel that there is no certainty from European streams in the future and feel that there will be a lack of support maybe to plant farms. So this is a true visionary aspect to make the farm more sustainable for the next generation. They are a local Welsh-speaking family. They've been in the valley since six generations. They're a hardworking and enthusiastic family. Gwynda is originally from Maes Garnet, and Larry, his wife, is from Anglesey. They have three children, and they are proud of the fact that they have been in the valley for six generations, and they want to see continuity. So this is something to provide a future for a young family. They want to manage the farm in a sustainable way. They also welcome they also welcome people to the valley and they want to share its history. Of course, in this relation, it is the connection with the brother-in-law of Oliver Cromwell, who signed the death warrant of Charles I. He lived in Isagarnev. They emphasise the importance of sharing history in order to enrich people's experience. They want also a Welsh aspect to these shepherdhoods. They want to use local produce and so forth. And they want to offer a warm Welsh welcome. A huge amount of effort and work has been put into preparing this application. They intended to start in 2019 and they've seen from statistics that glamping is becoming more and more popular. They want people to be able to experience the rich cultural heritage of the area and the tranquility that the area affords. They also feel that Mysa Garnet can add to what the National Park wants to do. Sorry, your time's up. Your three minutes are over. Thank you very much for your contribution, Hill. All right, I have a few hands up. Edgar, 
Brian Tracy, and then I've got a number, 832, whoever this number is, and then Eleanor. Who's 832? Yeah, that's Arnwen. Okay. Edgar. Well, I propose that we accept the recommendation of this. It's important that we help local people. And I'm in favour of this. But I just have a question regarding what if you want to abstain? So nothing. You don't take yes or no. So there's no colour for abstain. You just don't vote. Will anyone second that proposal then? Win seconds. Okay, Edgar has spoken. Eivor, do you want to come in? Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. No. To me, this place has been properly mitigated. It's up against the hedge. It's nice to be able to see three shepherd's huts on a farm, on a sheep farm. So to me, I'm 100% behind this. Thank you, Igor. Brian. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I have two, uh, I'm, in principle, I support this, don't have any problems with it. I think it's a good design and well thought through. I have two uh, specific questions. One is, Aled referred to it being part of a diversification scheme. For the sake of consistency with previous applications, can he confirm that we have received a business plan to support demonstration of that and how it fits and works with the farm business? And the second point relates to the um, proposed biodigester. Uh, I would be interested to know how that's proposed to be powered and whether we're talking about the need for laying underground cables or overground cables, because that could influence how the um, site looks or whether it's proposed to be uh, powered by um, any other means, uh, solar panels or does it need power at all? So I'd like clarification on that, please. Yes, Brian. Alert. Thank you, Brian. Alert. Can you respond to that, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, a farm plan was presented as a part of the application. It was considered that we had sufficient information that it is the part of a diversification scheme. It was very, um, fo uh, very inclusive information and so we were happy with the information that we had with regard to the biodigester it will need electricity there is a, an electricity pole nearby the farm and there will be elevation um, along the road leading to the site as well also obviously there will be a need for electricity to the shepherd heads as well Brian, are you happy with that? Do we know how that electricity is to be? I, I'm not quite sure. There's an electric pole, but is it going to be cables going across the site or is it going to be undergrounded? And what are the implications of either? either? Um, maybe the, cables done, the electricity cables will be undergrounded um, the along the road that's currently there. And also, there will be paths that will be extended to the site as well. Okay, Brian. Yep, thank, thank you very you much. Tracy. Tracy. Thank you, Chair. I support this application. Just have a question about the car park. The car park at the moment is being used by people who travel up the Combe to for. Um, walking trips in the Rhinoka, if this car park will now be used by the people who are going to be using the new huts, where th will the other spaces for parking be for people who want to go walking, 
but they're not staying in the huts. Thank you. I'll let, yes, there is a formal parking space, like you saw from the presentation. And a few cars will be able to park there. And uh, we've had a quite a long discussion with the applicant. He remembers a time when there were no parking spaces there, but they do provide them in the curtilage of the farm. And also there are parking spaces just down the valley as well. So it's um, it's not often that those parking spaces, additional parking spaces are needed in any case, but so there's space for up to 25 cars on the site. Okay, Tracy. And when? Thank you, Chairman. As the local member, I also support this application 100%. I know Quinta Vandeleri really well and the children as well. And I admire them that they're undertaking this and I fully understand why they need to diversify as well in order to support tourism and also to ensure the future of the farm and the future of the children. They've been working hard with, on this plan, like we've heard, and they've cooperated with every agency and with the park. And so I have nothing further to say, just that I support this application 100%. Okay, thank you, Elinor. Thank you, Chairman. I don't have a problem with the application. There's a potential for it to be sensitive, of course. There were some details, perhaps, regarding the application that caused me a little bit of concern because the details weren't there, probably. One was uh, electricity, and Brian has already mentioned this. I wasn't sure how it was going to be generated, from where it was going to come, and the obligations of that. Secondly, the water supply that would be required for these cabins. Was that going to come from the main um, water supply, or would it mean um, re-diverting a stream? As far as the design was concerned, it wasn't clear from the papers that we received, but we saw a clearer um, photo in Alad's presentation today, and we thought that the details such as the doors and also the stairs or the steps and the um, actually made them look a bit urban in an a uh, very rural, rural area. So it's, I think it's really important that every uh, small detail of the design is really important for this location. With regard to the site itself, I know that these shepherd huts are um, really limited inside and perhaps we need perhaps to provide things like, say, um, tables outside and uh, outside sitting spaces and it would be really good to see what the um, site would look like with all of those things that are required including litter bins and um, perhaps dog bins, dog litter bins, also signage around the site as well and lastly with regard to landscaping the site itself I noted from the application that there is a outstanding stone wall, perhaps having more use of that stone wall rather than the wire fence would be appropriate and I feel strong, more strongly even about that after seeing the photos today. And with the choice of plants, I appreciate the efforts that the officers and the applicants have made with regard to native cheese, but I think that all of these choices um, um, meant that they were pretty prickly plants. And if you have children on the site, perhaps we should look at again at the choice of plants that would be used for the planting scheme. I imagine that all 
all of those things besides the water supply, if that would mean the, um, diverting a stream, all of those could be included in conditions. So perhaps we should revisit the conditions and um, that's what I would favour in this case. Thank you. Thank you, Eleanor. Elvet, I just wanted to support the application. They're a Welsh uh, rural family and I would encourage anybody who hasn't visited to go and see the work that they've done there already with the conservation work, the walling work. They have contributed to the beauty of this valley for many, many years. And this is an extension to the diversification of the farm. And I definitely support this application. A wine. Thank you, Chairman. Eleanor has raised a few questions, and so the officer should have the opportunity to respond to that, please. Yes, I've made a note of that. Uh, if I've missed anything, if you could remind me. The water supply, there is a water supply nearby the site and where the uh, paths are supposed to be located as well. We have considered the design. Um, we, need, we have tried to make sure that the shepherd huts are in character with the site. With um, tables outside, we, that has also been a consideration. The applicant is aware that the site is in a special area and it's in the dark skies area and they're going to take advantage of that fact in order to um, promote these huts. And if we'll have to take uh, these things into consideration if they're going to put more things outside. Signage, I'm not sure if um, how much signage they'd need really to approach the site as far as the boundary of the site is concerned. Like I said in my presentation, I, that's why um, condition nine is included in the recommendation. And they've reduced that now in any case. There is a traditional stone wall at the far end of the site. Obviously we could consider asking them to include another stone wall. And they've asked for a fence but that's under consideration at the moment. Elinor, are you happy? Elinor, I don't think you'll click out on mute now. Yeah. Yeah, Elinor, are you Eleanor, are you happy? Yes, relatively happy, yes. I'm just not quite sure what happens with detailing like stonewalling, the design and the planting. Did you hear Alad's response? Yes, I did. Is there a commitment then to look at the conditions again and whether or not it would happen? Alad, can you respond to that? We can discuss these issues with the applicant. With regard to the planting, the Woodlands officer has been there and has given them advice and accept what you're saying about the planting. Perhaps it could be um, dangerous to the users, so that needs to be taken into consideration. Um, Can just I just come in there, Chairman? Just to be clear, with regard to the planting work, as I understand it, we've had that advice from the um, architectural head of in the, in the NRW. So those discussions have happened really over a period of time. And so everybody is quite happy with the planting. I'm not sure if there is an intention to change that on behalf of the applicant. The Woodlands officer is happy with the situation and NRW, so I'm not sure if we need to change that as such. 
we need to be clear on that point because before we come to any conclusion on this application. Alwyn? Alwyn just needs to unmute. I don't know what you feel, but the biodigester um, term has uh, made me feel a bit sick. But Brian and Eleanor has raised a few questions about this, uh, the location of this patent. And I was just wondering whether or not the it is um, appropriate for maintenance. I'm totally supportive of this application, but um, for peace of mind, is in a location that's practical. Allied, yes, it is. Obviously, as a part of the application, we consulted with the NW and the um, health and environment uh, with regard to the location of this biodigester. And obviously, only you only saw a part of the top of it, and I understand that. And there is no need for much work with regard to maintenance, really, once it's in place. Does anybody else want to speak? If not, we'll put it to the vote. Edgar has proposed that we support the application. Everybody in support of permitting the application. Green button. Everybody against the red button, please. And Iwan can tell us what the result of the vote is. Motion carried. Every show of hands is green. So, permitted. On to the next application, Landat Kilvor and Equin. Aled once again. I'll just share the presentation with you. Can everybody see the presentation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is an application in Kilvar and Equin to erect a headhouse tunnel, which includes a construction compound ceiling and compound and permanent access at Kilvar, and a new ceiling and compound on the eastern side of the Duirid estuary to connect the underground overhead line. This application the following debate is located within the boundaries of Gwynedd Council Local Planning Authority because the development includes a construction at the western end at Arthmin Ford as well. The application, as you can see, this is the location of the application and the consideration today, and the cables would go across the Duirid estuary which is in Gwynedd Council's area, as you can see on this boundary plan. In considering the application, there are 10 pylons. The, it does not require formal planning. As a background to this application, the application is in Kilvor, like I said. It's a headhouse tunnel and a construction compound as well. 
part of and this part of it is permitted development and does not require planning permission in addition to that because there's tunneling work and underground cabling work involved across the Duirid River it would need a marine license from the NRW and the officer has permitted this. To make it, to cl clarify, uh, the line is in red, the line in yellow, this is the work that involves relocating the pylon, the pink line is the work that they can undertake under existing consent and the green part is permitted development which is to move the pylons that is 40 pylons in total this is a photo of Kilvor village i'll show you the site in its context you can see the current pylons here in the background. They will be located and connect so that they will be connected to the new building. This is a photo of the site from Kilvar village. There will be a new access here. So this is the setting of the site, which you already have in your documents bundle. The headhouse tunnel will be built in this area shown here. These are the details of the building, which is quite a significantly large building. This shows the view from Kilvar village presently and it gives you an idea of how the building will look after the alleviation measures have been implemented after they have finished the work. To put the context of this project is it uses the 500 million um, budget in order to reduce the effect of overhead lines in areas of outstanding national beauty and national parks. In order to deliver this improvement, a group has been formed to advise stakeholders and several areas have been studied and there are several projects that have been undertaken in the Peak District and in the New Forest. And so this is a national project. As part of the application, a landscape and visual impact appraisal has been undertaken in order to show how it will affect the landscape. The design of the tunnel house has been considered carefully within our W, the authority and other important stakeholders. The materials have been chosen very carefully. Obviously, if permission is given, then the construction works will have some small effect over the short term. We expect the construction work to last about five years and there have been extended discussions with NRW I've been taking into full consideration. The site in Kilvar under consideration is in uh, the registered Ardetwe historical site. It's a part of uh, section 7, it's also under section 1. 
um, footing site. Besides the application, and with this application, several detailed surveys have been undertaken in order to consider the effect on the landscape and biodiversity. The site has stated the alleviation measures. There have been discussions with the authorities, Woodland Officer, with regard to landscaping. He's happy with the landscaping. And and there will be further reports presented to the authority. There will be no biodiversity loss for if the application is permitted. There will be um, biodiversity gains. In discussions with the national grid, they have stated that they are using a methodology that's used by DEFRA, which states that with projects like this, there should be a biodiversity gains of 10%. And they've explained in quite a lot of detail about this no net loss. And the National Grid are making a contribution to the National Park. And the biodiversity gain will be ensured through a legal agreement. And these officers have been discussions regarding this legal agreement. Like I said, it's in the Ardetu registered historic landscape. Katu and Gwynedd Archaeological um, Trust have been in discussions and the 10 pylons will be removed and it, there will be significant improvements for the landscape. Uh, we uh, accept there will be some issues regarding co construction during the construction phase. There will be paleo environmental remains probably on the site, but we will be able to manage these through any issues through conditions. There will be short term effects with the construction work. There will be a compound on the site in Kilvor. The development between the two sites, that is undergrounding and moving the pylons will mean that um, this will, there will be major employment around around 100 people and it will also include landscaping, fencing and drainage work. There will be indirect economic benefits as a result of the development and there are no negative impacts on tourism. And in discussions with the National Grid, they want to develop a strategy to um, include local contractors and use local accommodation for the workforce. General and residential amenities, obviously there will be some effects as a result of the construction work, such as the tunnel construction works, but most of the work will be in relation to Minforth. So it will be limited in Kilvar itself, but we will be including conditions to limit the effect. The Highways Authority and Gwyneth Council have no objections and Trodin units as well have no objections. Um, Conditions to submit and agree a construction traffic management plan in advance. There will be about 30 loads mo being moved, uh, HTV loads being moved on the site when the project will be at its peak. Obviously, there will be quite a lot of waste from these tunnels. And there have been discussions with the National Grid and North Wales Minerals and Waste Service regarding the tunneling work. 
and the majority of the tunneling work will be within the site in Gwynedd and it will be controlled through conditions and the CEMP. And one of the conditions is that they will have to let the local planning authority where the waste will go from the site and it will be managed, like I said, through the CEMP conditions. A Welsh language statement has been submitted as part of the application. They recognise the importance of the Welsh language and the impact on the language has been considered and they, they meet the requirements of Development Policy 18 and the workforce that are coming in from other areas, they have said that they will, will make sure that they are aware of the importance of the language and the signage on the, in the area will be bilingual as well. So this application has been in dis discussion for five years. There has been extensive consultation and discussions with the stakeholders and the authority. It's a part of a 500 million provision by Ofgem to improve the appearance of the AONBs and national parks. There are visual impact mitigations measures as a part of the application. The current site has been considered in Kilvor and the use of the materials are considered to be acceptable and the mitigation measures are acceptable and there's a 4% improvement in biodiversity and the National Grid have said that they're willing to increase that to 10% in other areas and there will also be economic benefits to this development. As a result, the officers are of the opinion that it coincides with current policies. This is an overview of the site. I'm hoping this link will work that you see in front of you at the moment. This is Priwat Bridge. I, you've probably travelled over Priwat Bridge. The link doesn't work, unfortunately. No, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to the camera. 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 Can you see the Google Maps link? No, we can't, unfortunately. There are quite a lot of conditions involved and there have been discussions in relation. Obviously there are standard conditions. To manage the construction and environment and to appoint an ecological officer to um, supervise the work the use of suitable materials and of course there will be a lighting scheme as well and there will be a condition that controls or manages the movement on site including the work hours as well and the traffic management plan Are the peat ma there will be a peat management plan as well and there will be Welsh language and the use of biling bilingual signage as well. All right, thank you very much. Now there are two speakers left. Where do we go now?
Hello, Chris. Can you hear us? Um, if you can unmute the microphone for us, please. Okay. Yo, Chris, okay. Yes, bit. can you hear me now? Yep. Yo. So, are you ready for? Yep. Yeah. You can speak now, Mr. Baines. Chris Baines, do we? I do in Kevnogir. Good morning, I'm Chris Baines and I support this application. I'm sure I can express my enthusiasm for this exciting scheme. I've chaired the Independent Stakeholder Advisory Group of National Grid's Visual Impact Provision Project, known as VIP, for the past six years. And the Dwyrid Estuary is one of only four projects we selected following rigorous assessment of more than 100 alternatives in national parks and AOMBs across the whole of England and Wales. I was delighted. I've loved this landscape all my life. My great uncle farmed at Nant Gwynant and my wife is a native Welsh speaker born in Pwcheli. Abadwyrid is spectacularly beautiful, but blighted by giant pylons and power lines. Their removal will be transformational and locals and visitors alike will be able to enjoy the estuary's unspoiled splendour for the first time in generations. Anyone lucky enough to ride on the coastal line or the Festiniog Railway at Trenbach or to walk along the coastal path will really be able to appreciate the beauty of the estuary and the views to the Snowdon Range. The project has been designed using an innovative stakeholder-led approach. My advisory group includes senior representatives from NRW, CADU, CPRW, the National Trust and several other conservation bodies. They all support the project. Gwyneth Council, the National Park Authority, Town and Community Councils and other local stakeholders have also been actively involved since 2015 and I've been impressed by the way National Grid has encouraged that process. This is why they want to remove the pylons from the village of Penryn Daedraith as well as the estuary and why the designs of the tunnel head housing at Garth Lane and at Kilvor differ so much. It's a response to that local consultation. National Grid has put forward clear plans to minimise disturbance and I'm confident that the project will boost local businesses in the immediate short term and on into the future. Tourism is obviously a cornerstone of your economy and whilst the mountains are spectacular, the gentler coastline must be a key to year-round visitor income. I've been involved with landscape and nature conservation all my life, and it's a, privilege, it's a privilege to help in delivering projects on such a transformational scale. If approved, your scheme will be world-class. It will bring huge long-term environmental, recreational and economic benefits. It will restore the natural beauty of this very special place and delight local people and many people like me who love your landscape with a passion. I hope you will approve this application. Jochen Bauer. Jochen Bauer. Jochen Bauer. Thank you very much, Chris. Now, now Gareth. next. Hello, how are you? I'm well, thanks. So you have three minutes. All right. I just want to state my support really for this application. It will obviously bring significant economic benefits to the area and following COVID, of course, we will need this type of benefits in the area. I think, however, the biggest aspect of this is the visual benefits. The Dwyfor Estuary is one of the most beautiful places in Wales. You've got Harlech Castle as well, on our doorstep Tal Sarnaill and Dequin, and then Stiniog as well. And 
Then you have these pylons. So I support this application and local people are supportive as well. There has not been a single objection during this consultation. And I think that speaks multitudes. Very few consultations like this come back with no objection whatsoever. So to differentiate, if you look at the Glasslin estuary, under the Glasslin estuary, the grid is underground. So you can see the difference that this project will make when we free up the Duirid and the two beaches in particular. Because of course, what you have now is the pylons and the lines are running over the land. So I just want to state that I'm supportive and I hope this project continues. All right, thank you very much, Gareth. Before I open this up to the floor, can I ask a question to Anwen? How much energy is imported? How much is imported here? Okay, sorry, can you start again? We can't hear you. Your signal isn't very good at all. At its height, about 100 people will be employed. And how many of these people will be imported? Obviously, because of the nature of the work, we can't give specific figures, but the majority of the workers will be employed locally because of the site security and so forth. Local contractors will be used. All right, thank you. So, next. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Just a couple of things. First of all, I would like to say how happy I am to see this application. The National Park is very fortunate to have money from this source to do work that will improve things significantly in this area regarding infrastructure. We've talked about the Glasslin and they decided that they should do this in the Glasslin initially. And this area have decided that they want the same thing. And I'm very supportive of this application. Just a couple of things. First of all, regarding the peatlands, I realized with the peatlands that this is something very difficult to get right regarding keeping the biodiversity, keeping the peat exactly how it is. So I'd like to say it's very important that we keep a close eye on this to make sure that the peatland scheme is thoroughly achieved and is achieved well. And the second aspect and the most important aspect to me at the moment is the biodiversity gains. I'm very supportive of the fact that they're talking about biodiversity gains and this is ambitious actually and I'm supportive of this but I would like to ask if you can answer this where will these gains be achieved will they be achieved in the national park in North Wales or somewhere else in the UK and if we can press them to try and bring these gains locally where there's quite a bit of need actually to do work to add to the good work that's already been done with the peatlands thanks all right thank you very much tim Alad, do you want to answer yes thank you mr chair obviously the kilvar site has peatlands intact I would acknowledge that straight away. Discussions are ongoing. 
with the peatlands within the national park regarding how the money will be used there all right thank you very much Owen. thank you mr chair i just want to explain first of all why i've declared an interest in this it's not a prejudicial interest but I just want to say that I am interested in this from the aspect of the social linguistic and socioeconomic aspect and from reading the documents about two weeks ago now, I felt that the assessment of the socioeconomic impact was a bit of a light touch. Now I realise that they didn't have to do this, but I did express my concerns. So I do welcome Aled's recommendation that there is consideration to develop some strategies. And just to follow up on the point that the chair made, a strategy, well, in a way, the principle is to keep the benefits locally as much as possible with this 100 million pounds and that it will be over five to six years. So what I'm looking for really is some confirmation that they will be developing a local purchasing policy, a local supply chain policy, and also a strategy for worker accommodation. And on this point, actually, I just want some confirmation from Aled or Jonathan. I think the suggestion was that to add this to the notes and I'm just wondering if the officers have had time to do that and if they are willing to support that then I would be very willing to do the recommendation with that amendment. All right, Alad, do you want to come back? Yes, thank you Chair for that. We have been having discussions recently with the National Grid and they have given us a promise that they will be developing a strategy, many local strategies actually, local purchasing and so forth. And like I said in my presentation, there are designations and conditions and that brings the strategy as part of the consultation document. And they will be operating in that way. All right, well, I will propose the recommendation with that note then. Was there anyone second that? Edgar, all right. Then we have Anwen next. I think when you need to unmute. Yes, thank you, Chair. I'm wearing two hats here, so I'm clerk of the local community council in Tal Sarnay, and I know that they are 100% supportive of this application, and we've had many meetings actually with the officers of the national grid, and we've also had, we would have had more meetings apart from COVID. Now, they are concerned, however, as a community council regarding the impact this work will have on local residents when it will be operational because in the bungalows nearby there are quite a few elderly people so will they be writing regularly to the local residents will heavy lorries be going past what about the working hours i am supporting the application of course and i'm very happy that this at long last is bearing fruit all right thank you and when alad yes mr chair as you're aware lengthy discussions have been had over the past few years with this application and the national grid are very willing to be a team player here making sure that they communicate regularly with the local residents there will also be specific guidelines managing working hours and movements from the site as regards to lorries and so forth 
and if there are any problems then we will be willing to sort them but having worked with the national grid they are very willing to work with the local residents thank you very much edgar Um, to, to apply to material, uh, Naturally, I'm in favour of this. It will bring work into the area. And we've visited the site, of course. And I think this needs to go back to Gwynedd Council as well, doesn't it? Yes. So the sooner the better. We need the work in this area. So I'm seconding this. All right, thank you, Edgar. Judith. Thank you. Yes, I'm supportive as well, but just the comments really along the same lines as Owain said regarding the local support. Now, I don't see anything in the list of conditions. Is it possible to add this to the conditions then? But we've said we've set the conditions already. We, we can do as you like, Mr. Chair. Just very quickly on this though, we have had discussions regarding this, following the comments that I made last week, actually, and regarding the number of workers we're talking about on the site, I don't think it's possible, well, rather, I don't think it would be practical to set conditions regarding planning guidelines. However, the National Grid are willing to put a note at the end of the discussion so there's no enforcement but there is encouragement the national grid have said that they will do this as far as possible so i'm confident that they will do their best to achieve this all right thanks judith happy eleanor thank you chair i know that there's an intention to screen this into the landscape but of course they will also be widening the road i believe and they'll need to cut back some of the trees so would it be possible to have some clarification whilst they're using the space around the building that they will have enough space to ensure that trees can grow there to achieve this screening aspect maybe 10 15 years down the line thank you Alad. do you want to come back mr chair of course a lot of work has been done on this to ensure that the building has been adequately screened and of course we need to make sure that the landscape is safeguarded and protected i accept that completely and i'll pass the information on to the national grid to freya hi sorry um uh, i also want to say that i support this too uh not just for the visual benefit um but um for, I think it will greatly benefit the local economy through uh, employing local people and contractors and using local accommodation, uh, which will hopefully have a positive knock-on effect on other services in the area. Um, and I think, uh, it, like Gareth said, there have been no, no objections. And also having spoken to people from the National Grid last week, um, they've only received positive feedback during the pre-application uh, consultation, which I think is good. Um, but I also share Anne Wen's concerns or the Community Council's uh, concerns, um, as I'm also the local representative, about uh, noise uh, and elderly residents living nearby. Um, but yeah, that's it. But I, from 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 going to uh, from attending the meetings with the National Grid, I'm, I think they said that 
that most of the work will be at the Minford end, or mo and most of the noise will be at the Minford end, and the and the transportation of the um, materials that are being dug out. But I I don't know if I've remembered this incorrectly. Maybe Jonathan, do you do you remember much about this? Sorry. Um, would I have to say Cora? You know, not maybe Alad would be the best person to answer this. Yes, the majority of the work will happen in Minford. They've chosen this area and less work will be happening in Kilvar. Like I said as well, there will be specific conditions in the regulations regarding the lorries and when they'll be working on the sites. Okay, thank you, Alex. I don't see any other hand up so we'll move on to a vote. Owain has proposed that we approve this and Edgar has seconded this. So everybody who's for, yes, the green button, everyone against, no, the red button. That's been carried. Everybody's green, mostly. And this brings us to the last group, which is Llanvendigaid Hall, Ross Levine. Thank you, Chair. I'll bring the presentation up. Can everybody see the screen that's been shared? Yes. Sorry, I'm working on two screens here. So this is an application for two shepherds' huts to be used as holiday accommodation in Llanvendigaitros Levain. So this includes the main house, which is a grade two listed building, and three outbuildings which are used as holiday cottages. Also, on the site, there is a caravan park, and they have about five caravans there. So I'm going to try to take you now to the site on Google. Now, can you see Google Earth on your screen? Yes. So, I take it that everybody can see then. So this is the site. You've got the agricultural site on the left. The holiday cottages are here, and then you've got another holiday cottage that's been developed since these pictures have been taken. So you've got the main house here, which is a listed building, and then you've got a caravan site, which is here behind the trees. So here's the caravan site here. Then I'll zoom back over. So you can see the listed building here and the caravan sites. So, sorry. Uh, so, so here's a plan of the sites. So one part is proposed in the garden, really, of the caravan site. Then there's two on higher land. And these are the types of units that are proposed. So they include a toilet, showers, 
and basic food preparation facilities. So here's the site itself. This is the first site and it's been hit by the high walls in this site. Moving on, this is Shepherd Huts number two and then this is number three. There's a video, a very short video of the two Shepherd Hut sites. It's pretty quick, but it'll give you some context really of the site. And if you want me to stop, then just say and I'll stop. This site is quite a bit higher than the main house and the outbuildings. Then this application was rejected last year. There were four units applied for last year. One thing that's changed this time is that the applicants have agreed to give up the touring caravan sites if they have the planning permission for this. So even though we agree that the application is not fully compliant with the main aspect of policy 29 because it's not part of an agricultural scheme and neither is it a touristic attraction. What works in favour is that the visual impact is limited and it is not harmful on the landscape or on the listed building. And that, of course, would cease to operate if planning permission was granted. Officers are of the view that this is a material consideration which should be afforded very substantial weight in the overall balance. And we believe that this is justification to the granting of planning permission. Officers also consider that providing planning permission would not contravene or undermine policies or set a dangerous precedent. So the recommendation is to propose subject to the conditions noted. But we need to include a revised scheme following the planning recommendations to seed operating the touring caravan park. All right, any comments? Well, thank you very much for the presentation. The pictures are most beneficial as well to see exactly what's happening there. Thank you very much. Now, who wants to speak? Miriam? Can we hear anybody? I would, I'd like to speak, please. Yeah, Brian, go ahead. Brian, go ahead. Um, I have two, oh, sorry, you meant uh, from outside. Anyway, two, um, two points, um, Chairman. One is, I'm not very happy that in, in this, once again, we're being asked to approve without detailed knowledge of how the waste disposal is going to take place in relation to sewage and so on. Um, and it, it leaves us somewhat exposed, bearing in mind that quite often there's, you know, there is hard infrastructure involved in that. And without that knowledge, we're kind of shooting blind a little. Um, and, and second point I would raise is the question of the um, removal of the license on the uh, touring vans and camper vans and the like. Um, 
really it's a flag for the future in the question as to whether it raises um, a bigger issue of um, how we manage the camper van uh, increase that seems to be going on. It may be insignificant in this local area, but it's a wider principle that I think we need to consider if we're um, removing that sort of potential um, for, for those types of vehicles. Um, so really, I, I, would, I would support the application over and above the one that we received before. Um, but I'd like reassurance on the, the sewage uh, situation. Yeah, um, Brian, Sarah, at your table, questioner, Carfosheta. Yeah, um, but. You answered that question regarding the sewage. Yes, the pod will be connected to the toilets there. So it'll be connected to the toilets. Of facilities in the caravan park with the shepherd's hut we haven't had the details but it's very close to the house and there would be an application to we would need to approve any developments before the application was approved we could manage it in that way neil Thank you, Chair. My point is following up Brian's one, which is um, whilst the report talks about the impact will be materially less harmful than the motorhomes, what it doesn't address is the issue of displacement. So if they're not going to be there, where will they be? And I think one of the things that we should request from officers is a report on what a proposed strategy would be for managing the influx of camper vans in terms of what existing provision exists, what provision there is for discharge from camper vans because not all camper vans park in a camper van site and um, they will have fairly unpleasant stuff to discharge at some point. And I think what we're dealing with here is in a way it's a bit of a piecemeal response because if they can't park there, they will park somewhere else, assuming there's that kind of demand. And I know a number of members have raised concerns about camper vans um, because they contribute very little to the local economy if they just park overnight somewhere and they can create, as they have indeed in this valley, a considerable amount of waste. So whilst I'm broadly supportive of what this appears to be like in terms of the, the visual impact, I do think it's really important that we have a strategy from officers <laughs> that looks at capacity, that looks at demand, and that we have mm. some overall approach in terms of planning and responding, and perhaps encouraging more camper van sites if that's required in appropriate places. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sarah, did you want to come in? Perhaps John would like to come in on this point. Can I just respond quickly to that? There are two points really. On, with regard to the application itself, the effect will be very small. There are five mobile caravans. And so the effect of the caravans moving elsewhere is going to be very small in this case. But I do accept the more extensive point. We are preparing an annual report on the local development plan policies, which is the annual monitoring report, which is being presented to the government, Welsh Government, and it comes in front of the members in the autumn. I think we will have to look at this issue with regard to camper vans parking illegally in the park. I think the bigger problem is different to the application that we are dealing with today but we will pick it up in the annual monitoring report 
uh, which you will see in the autumn. Thanks, Jonathan Owain. Thank you, Chairman. I'll um, limit it to the application which is in front of us today. It wasn't totally clear. I'm looking specifically at uh, conditions three and four that there is an intention to remove the right regarding the mobile caravans. If I understand it correctly, this is permitted under the license under the Caravans Act. 1960. If we remove those rights, what sort of control do we have to avoid a situation where the mobile caravans would may reappear, say, in a year's time? Um, the, the, there would be a planning application as well as a condition, and because the condition wouldn't be able to manage the current situation with regard to the license, then the planning obligation would be needed to do that and that's why we recommend that as well as the condition. If I can just come back on that, it wasn't clear from the photos was their infrastructure related to the site? You mentioned something about a toilet, but is there any other infrastructure in place? Because the conditions don't make it clear. When you say infrastructure, what do you mean? With the mobile caravan uh, facility, uh, there had standings there. Uh, um, electricity provision, water provision, there is no hard standing at all on the current site. There are electricity connections already there. So are those being removed as well? We can include a condition that they do remove them, if John and Jane agree that that is possible. They're removing the mobile caravans, so there is no reason for them to be there. So we can include those details in the legal agreement that we'll prepare with the applicant to um, in getting rid of the caravans from the site. Thank you, Edgar. We dealing with the application that we have in front of us. It's an improvement on what's already there. So I support it. I don't know if anybody's proposed it. Do you want to make a proposal? Yes. Edgar is proposing that we permit it. John? John is on mute at the moment. Since Edgar has proposed it, I'll second this application. The only concern is that there are less uh, mobile caravans going to be on the site. It is a concern in the area. On Monday night, there were two caravans that had been packed near the rugby club in Dogesha, and I'm sure it's happening um, even during the lockdown. And I, I am truly concerned that this is going to be a problem. Alwyn? Okay. Thank you, yes. I feel the same, really, with, about the business. Well, the thing is, there are so many things in the air here that is subject to things in the future. It's um, a case of replacement here, the mobile caravans, and getting the pods as a replacement for them. Is there any advantage? How many additional beds or how many less beds will there be in these pods? And how much demand is there for the pods in comparison with mobile caravans? At least with mobile caravans and these camper vans, they move away at the end of the holiday season, whereas the pods will be there permanently, as far as I can see. On top of that, we have to consider the services to the pods it hasn't been resolved properly yet, 
Um, there will be conditions, I can see that, but I would be happy to vote for this if I knew properly what the conditions are and what's being proposed in the body of the report rather than as a condition that will be um, decided upon in the future. Sarah, as far as the conditions are concerned, we are confident that the conditions are, uh, does not remove our control over this when the details will be considered in great detail as far as how many sleeping spaces will be available the mobile common park is a year-round site but it doesn't necessarily mean that people are not there at, in some parts of the year so i don't have the information relating to how much more or how much less people would use the site as a result of whichever option here. I can't see any other hands up. I take it that nobody else wants to speak. Therefore, we we'll go to the vote. Edgar has proposed that we permit it and John has seconded it. Everybody in a in favour of permitting green against red button, please. You only one? Okay, one. 12 green. Two red. So, motion carried. Permitted. Thank you. Committee is now at an end. Can I just thank the members for being so disciplined? It, the committee w went very smoothly. Also, can I thank the IT gang because, fair play, they've um, achieved some miracles here. Also, I don't know who is appearing instead of Ivar Glenn. I don't know who, who it is. Okay, there are two people against Ivar Glenn's name. Anyway, before you close, can I just thank you as well, Elwin? I know there's been a lot of preparatory work. You've had training sessions separately and for the IT gang as well. There's quite a lot of work that's um, gone on behind the scene and it's worked really well. 